Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for those new here, hi, my name is Jenny. I'm a family medicine physician and a mom of two. And so last week I finally got a, my text message saying that I was able to sign up for my COVID vaccine. So lots of questions and I wanna answer them, some of them right now, um, and then show you guys some of the symptoms that I had after I got the vaccine and then answer some more questions about like, pregnancy and vaccinations, breastfeeding and vaccinations. I'm currently still breastfeeding London. Um, and so lots of questions on that. And then those who are trying to conceive. So if you guys are interested, then keep on watching. Um, so when you come into my office, I truly believe in patient-centered decision-making. So I just provide all the necessary information so that my patients can make a informed decision. And so, in getting this vaccine, I always have to weigh the risk and the benefits. So for me personally, I am constantly exposed at my work. I am a physician, and so it's not as bad as inpatient medicine where I'm actively taking care of really, really sick COVID patients, but I do have positive COVID patients who come into my clinic. So. I'm at increased risk of exposure and then also bring it at home to my family. The risk of getting COVID for me personally, um, I'm not sure. It can be mild or it can be really severe. According to the CDC, approximately 6% of people who died from COVID had no other comorbidities, which means that those 6% of people who died had no underlying illnesses, which is me, and were not on any other medications. The only thing that they died from was COVID. So that is a little bit concerning. This is only counting mortality. It doesn't count morbidity. Mortality is the number of people that died. Morbidity stands for all the things that can happen that you survive with after you've been infected with a disease. Uh, with COVID, we know that it could potentially lead to death, but some of the COVID long haulers get continued shortness of breath. They have difficulties walking short distances without having to stop and then catch their breath because it causes irreversible lung damage. We also know that it can lead to strokes and heart attacks, vascular disease or clotting disorders that will end up leading to further complications. Um, some people are saying theoretically it can lead to erectile dysfunction. There are studies that have showed vascular disease in the toes causing amputations of toes, legs, fingers, and things like that. Um, those people survive, but they have long-term issues that last after COVID that affects them for the rest of their lives that is the risk that I have to take. As compared to a vaccine where the most common side effects is arm soreness, uh, general malaise, which is body aches, fatigue, feeling tired, or headaches. And that is basically the immune response coming. So I know a lot of people will say, well, Jenny, we don't know the long-term effects of the vaccine. And I want to tell you that this vaccine has been studied for actually a long time. Not this particular vaccine, but the technology behind this vaccine has been studied for a long time. It originally started with SARS and we didn't develop the vaccine for SARS because it was contained um, and it didn't become a global pandemic. So we use that technology, the mRNA technology, and switched it out and use this mRNA vaccine for COVID instead. So my friend Sally, who's an internal medicine physician, made up this really amazing analogy. She said that it's kind of like, you know, a butterscotch cookie was SARS and using that recipe, we just switched out the butterscotch and added chocolate chips and made a chocolate chip cookie. The recipe is still the same. We just switched an ingredient and then had this new vaccine. I've also said multiple times on Instagram that this vaccine mRNA technology has been trialed before in Zika and in influenza. This was in like over three years ago. So the people in those trials continue to be followed and it's been more than three years and no significant adverse reactions have occurred in that population. 
we also know that based on science and the way the human body works, our immune system works, that the majority of adverse reactions, including anaphylaxis and vaccine injury, happens within the first few days of getting any vaccine. And more rare illnesses such as Guillain-Barre can happen anywhere in about three months of getting the vaccine. But also remember that Guillain-Barre can also happen with natural infection. So this vaccine has been proven that it is 95% effective in over 70,000 people, 40,000 40, from Pfizer and 30,000 from Moderna. And so knowing that I can protect myself and protect my family and not get any of the long lasting effects such as lung damage, strokes, heart attacks, and the risk of those happening, I am choosing to get the vaccine. So for those saying that I'm young or Stan is young or my children are young, that they won't be affected even if we get sick, I wanna show you this list from the CDC. And these are the people that have become sick and have passed away. There are several people, just a handful Full of under one from ages one through four who have passed away and I know it's a very small number but if that was your child if that is your family it will affect you and I can't imagine losing anyone I love and knowing that it was possibly my fault like I would just not be able to live with myself all right so I'm going to show you guys me getting the vaccine I'm gonna show you guys um, what it felt like and my symptoms within the first 48 hours I will also let you guys know how London is doing because I continue to breastfeed him all right let's do it Hi, not too bad mm. <laughs> what I do? You want milk? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right, guys. So I just got the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine um, into my right arm. I don't know why I do that, but I usually put it in my dominant arm because I feel like the more that you use it, the less sore that it's going to be. So far, it is less sore than the flu vaccine. Um, I know that the Pfizer vaccine has to be frozen, like sub 80 degrees and when they inject it into you they thaw it so it didn't feel cold or anything at all just felt like a needle stick um, and then it was over um, but yeah i feel great no initial reactions all right guys so i am home it has been approximately one hour since i got the vaccine um, my arm is not sore usually the most common side effect is arm soreness or arm redness inflammation in that area because all your immune cells are going to that area and Mom. building up an immune Mom. response so so Mom. far nothing Mom, don't hurt right there. <laughs> i didn't get hurt honey i told you i got a shot right there remember yeah it hurt doesn't hurt your shot didn't hurt no it didn't hurt then why did you got the band-aid for? Um, I got the band-aid because just in case I was bleeding. Why? All right, guys. So it is hour two. My arm is getting a little bit sore now, um, and I'm tired because there's lots of reasons to be tired. I don't know if it's because of the vaccine or is because I only slept four hours last night. So I have a lot of questions and concerns about those who are pregnant, those who are trying to conceive, and those who are lactating. I am personally still breastfeeding London. So there was this viral, viral, <laughs> viral article that came out from a previous Pfizer employee saying that they were concerned about theoretical risk of the vaccine causes infertility, but it didn't make sense from an embryologic standpoint because the fetus which is the baby is the one who develops the placenta and secondly 
if that was the case, natural immunity from getting COVID would also cause antibodies to attack the placenta and cause inter infertility issues as well. We have not seen that. We haven't seen early pregnancy loss. We haven't seen miscarriages in pregnancy if that was the case with COVID patients. So that being said, major organizations such as the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology has recommended that patients be offered the vaccine if they are pregnant. Um, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine has put out a statement saying that people who are trying to conceive and those who are lactating, they recommend that those particular patients actually get the vaccine. Because we know that patients who are pregnant are at higher risk of being hospitalized, requiring ICU, or requiring intubation. And so with limited resources now, it is better that patients get the vaccine. I don't feel too bad. So we will check in before bedtime and then again tomorrow morning. Say bye. <laughs> so it has been 12 hours or more like 13 hours uh, since I got the vaccine and I feel tired. I feel like I pulled an all nighter and I am running off coffee the next day. <laughs> Um, or I feel like I just was at Encore Beach Club in the pool all day and then got ready for the nightclub all night and then ended up at like the blackjack table or something. Um, so I, I feel tired, but overall well, like I have no headaches. I don't have body aches. Um, my arm is a little bit sore. I would say it's like a five out of 10, but nothing more sore than a regular flu vaccine. I also wanted to point out that, you know, these are not side effects of a vaccine. They're more of what we call reactogenicity. And what that means is that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Your body's immune system is working and that's why you feel this way. Like we don't call like when you take a laxative and you have diarrhea, we don't call diarrhea a adverse reaction from taking a laxative. It's just what it was supposed to do. So when you take a vaccine, this is what, you know, your immune system is being stimulated. And so you feel kind of off, um, but overall, well. On the second day of Christmas, my B cells gave to me some IgM antibodies. <laughs> oh, that's such a nerd joke. Um, so, if you have acute infection or acute immunity, your bodies produce IgM antibodies as compared to chronic or like long time immunity is IgG. Uh, so yeah, I'm feeling a lot better today. My arm soreness is probably like a 2 out of 10. Um, had a great night's sleep-ish, you know, as good as sleeping with a little one can be. Water. Um, but yeah, I, I feel great. I don't have any muscle aches. I don't have any headaches. Um, so yeah. So I highly recommend you talking to your doctor about this once the vaccine becomes available to the general public. Right now there are ongoing studies for women who have gotten the vaccine while they're pregnant. I know several doctors who are currently pregnant right now who got the vaccine. There's many lactating women who got the vaccine and there are many who are trying to conceive who got the vaccine. So that information will be readily available for you once this vaccine becomes publicly available. So. I highly recommend talking to your doctor. So that's everything I had for this video. If you guys have any other questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer as many questions as I can. Also, if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram and I have 
also linked this other video of commonly asked COVID-19 vaccine questions in the cards. I will also be documenting my uh, booster shot number two of the COVID vaccine. I heard that this is where you would have more symptoms of reactogenicity. So I'm excited to share that all with you. So if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss any videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.